is up folks, Solar Strike here, and today we are here to talk about Half-Life, a first person shooter for Windows developed by Valve and published by Sierra on November 19th, 1998. Serving as the first game for the company, it is set in a research facility that has gone completely haywire due to a failed experiment of an analysis of a material from another dimension, causing an alien invasion to happen from said dimension due to a resonance cascade linking the two dimensions. You play as Gordon Freeman, a physicist who was in the test chamber at the time of the incident, and he battles through alien forces to stop the invasion. A more realistic take on the first person shooter at the time, the game was very different from the peers of its day with an uninterrupted story told entirely from the first person using scripted sequences, as well as using various chapters and a continuous progression system throughout the world, not to mention then cutting edge graphics for its day. Thanks to these aspects, the game was acclaimed by many, selling a a solid 8 million copies by late 2004 and spawning equally or even more well acclaimed sequels and spin-offs and cementing Valve as one of the key players in gaming. But what happened that made Half-Life so appealing to gamers back in the day? Let's find out! Valve was founded by two ex-Microsoft employees. Gabe Newell and Mike Harrington in August 1996. The young company decided to ship a first person shooter with horror elements using id Software's Quake engine, who licensed them the engine, despite the company being skeptical of Valve's efforts at first. Valve would modify a large majority of the Quake World version of the engine to support features such as skeletal animations as well as direct 3D support in addition to OpenGL and software rendering, with this fork being known as Gold Source. The modus operandi for the team was working to aim for a more advanced approach on narrative, world building, and character in the still youthful genre. Many inspirations for the game included Stephen King's The Mist, as well as an episode of The Outer Limits, The Borderland, in addition to its Doom and Quake, the former of which Valve wished to emulate its means to scare the player. The name Half-Life was chosen by the team due to its standing out, as well as there being a corresponding visual coming with the Half-Life of an Atom, the series' iconic Lambda symbol, meaning the Decay Constant. Additionally, the team would crutch onto the manga series Akira for level design, environment, inspirations. The game made its first public showing in the winter of 1997 when some screenshots were published online by Valve and publisher Sierra, who became interested as the once mighty company was struggling at this point. Later, the game made another demonstration at E3 1997 where Valve showed off the game's AI, advanced for its time with fear and path behavior, and its animation. This demonstration was well regarded by those who saw it even winning best game of the show. While originally scheduled for November 1997, by the late summer of 1997, it was clear the game was not having a clear design, despite some very innovative ideas. So the game was postponed by one year, and most of the level design would be scrapped much to the anger of publisher Sierra, who had already begun PR on the game. A new prototype level was made from a small team at Valve incorporating every element of the game, which this team would iterate throughout one month, described as Die Hard meets The Evil Dead by designers. This design approach proved to be very effective as it allowed the player to interact with the environment extensively and vice versa, and would be used for the rest of the game's levels. Substituting for a game designer who could not be found, the game's development continued using a system known as the Cabal, a group of six individuals across departments through six months in multiple several hour long meetings with individual members coming and going due to burnout for the time needed to be in there. The Cabal would be in charge of the game's core design such as narrative, level layouts, AI, relative gameplay elements, among other things, making a 200 page design document on each aspect of the game, as well as a 30 page narrative document for Mark Laidlaw, a science fiction novelist, to write a script on. Laidlaw would mostly rely on his tricks from his background in writing to help out with ideas for the team. The Cabal approach would prove to be very effective for development, starting playtesting within a couple months at Sierra, 
Thanks to the much smoother development cycle by the Cabal approach, the game once again made an appearance at E3 1998, winning awards such as Best PC Game, and despite continuing skepticism from id Software and some other parties, was eagerly awaited by gamers, especially after the leak of the Half-Life Day 1 demo, meant for journalists and OEMs in the early fall of 1998. Finally, on Thursday, November 19, 1998, Half-Life was shipped to stores. It was lauded by critics and gamers alike for its high immersion and interactivity, as well as its excellent gameplay and narrative, while the game's final segments were criticized being too different from the rest of the game. Half-Life became an immediate classic in the eyes of many, much to the surprise of Valve. It sold 200,000 copies by the end of 1998 in the US, and 1 million copies by April 1999 worldwide. Long-term sales remained strong, reaching 8 million copies sold by the time of the sequel's release in November 2004, and 9.3 million copies within a decade of the game's release. Due to the game's immense success, two expansions to the game were made by Gearbox Software, Opposing Force in late 1999, and Blue Shift in mid-2001. The latter's development was troubled, as it was initially developed for a cancelled Dreamcast port of Half-Life, before being moved to the PC shortly before that port was cancelled in June 2001. It brought new, higher detailed models to the game, meant for that port, over to the PC. Fortunately, the work for the port was not wasted, as it served the basis for the later PlayStation 2 port of the game in late 2001, featuring competitive play and an exclusive expansion known as Half-Life Decay. One additional port was planned for classic macOS, but never came to be due to severe regressions in the porting process. But much later, received ports to both OS X and Linux in February 2013. Work quickly followed on a sequel to the game, which their efforts would culminate with Half-Life 2 six years later in 2004, followed by two episodic sequels in 2006 and 2007, and one additional virtual reality sequel in 2020. An extremely avid community of creations followed in the wake of the game's success, such as famous mods turned retail products such as Team Fortress Classic, originally a Quake mod, and Counter-Strike, among many, many other mods throughout the decades and continuing support by Valve on this game, such as a port to Valve's later Source engine used for Half-Life 2, known as Half-Life Source. Despite some technological improvements such as physics improvements, this port was criticized for underutilizing the power of the Source engine, leading to a group of fans to remake the game from scratch in 2005, getting Valve's approval and finishing in late 2012, except for the game's final segments, which the team wanted to revamp, which was completed in December 2019. The remake was finally completed in March 2020, after a long wait in early access as a commercial title, addressing some long-standing complaints of the original game. As for how this game holds up, I am going to be using the Steam version of the original game, which has received various updates throughout the years for some modern sensibilities. Now, let's run, think, shoot, and live all together. <laughs>